So we already created the table and the database. We already saw the PHP page, which will be responsible for saving data. Now is the time when I have to work on my Android application. So let me just show you what exactly the app would look like. We are back with the same app. Here is my second button. So if I click this, it is supposed to take me to a new activity where it will prompt me to enter a username and a password. And when I will click this submit button, it should get stored the data in this following web service. So the same domain over there, I have a folder called Volley, and inside that, I have created one page called insert.php. So let me just show you the thing in the cloud. Here it is. So if I go to the file manager and then to upload files, it will show you to that particular page. Let the page get open. We also go to manage database. And from here, we can go to manage PHP my admin. It will show you the current content of the table where we are trying to insert data. And here it is. So let me expand my database. That will show me the table. And here it is. This is a table which I created in the previous videos. If you didn't see, please check it out. And these two records are already there in the table. Now I am supposed to add one more record. Okay. And I've already shown you the code that was responsible for inserting data in the page. So this is the code that is responsible for inserting data. If remember, I said that there has to be Android keys. And now we'll talk about that. So let's get to the Android code even. And here it is. Once the user instantiates the request queue and the string request, this is the portion where the initialization of the request queue is done. I'm creating a progress dialog box. What the dialog was all about, you will see it very soon. The user is supposed to give these two input in the form of username and password. Those two input I'm storing in the two string variable S1 and S2 respectively. We have already seen the string request method. We have already seen the error listener. Volley will provide you one more method that is called get params. We have to override this method, which is responsible for taking input from the user. And this method will be implementing the data structure called map which is an interface which will be implemented through the help of a class called hash map. So what I'm doing basically is the variable that is storing the input like S1 and S2, I'm putting them in the form of a key value pair. So the params has a method called put. It is the first key, the username, in the form of this variable S1. And this is the second key in the form of password through this particular variable S2. And these two keys I said in the PHP N that they have to be same. So basically I was referring about this key. See, if you are not keeping both the key names same, then definitely there will be an issue. So after that, you're firing the return param. So when you're firing this, the data will come to this particular page. <coughs> Sorry. So when the data comes to that particular page, now is the time that it will come to the cloud. So let me show you over here. So it is going to come to the page which I have written over here. So let me fire the page once again so that you can see it. Let me take you to that URL where the data is going to be inserted, which we already seen in the previous video. And here it is. Inside the volley folder, I have a page called insert.php. Let me open the page. And here it is. So in this particular page, the data will be coming. The credential already been discussed in the previous video. And then it will fire the insert command. Okay. So once the insert command get fired, then it will be sending a response that is called record inserted successfully. If there is any kind of issue, then it will be record not inserted. And if you are giving out blank values, then the message will be blank error. So let's run the code in the emulator right now. Assume that I'm not giving any particular input. I will hit the button. This dialog box works over here. And then you get to see the respond in the form of the PHP message that is blank record. Okay. Working pretty fine. Now imagine I'm giving only one input. That is Swaru. And I'm not giving the other input. That can what happen. I hit the button again. Logo dialog box is going to work. Again, a blank record. So you have to give right. 
So I am giving both the input. Let's assume a path. So ha, uh, that is the input I have given. So now when I hit the submit button, progress dialog box goes right over here. See, I have implemented the progress dialog box. That will make the user aware that the interaction is going on. So let's wait for a while. And then it will come to the params part, get params. This method will be invoked and the show dialog box is implemented. When the response comes from the PHP end into the on response method, I will hide the dialog box and I will generate another custom method called show message when I'm passing to arguments. In my next video, I will be talking about this particular method, which is basically an alert dialog box. Okay. So let me now run the program once again. So I hit it. Progress dialog box gets called and the record is successfully. So when the record is gets successfully come to the database part, let me refresh it and check whether that particular username is Swarup and Shaha turn up over here or not. So already the two records were there and it is right over here. You saw that I didn't provide any ID because that was auto incremented. If you remember the code, null was there. So automatically the code got generated. Okay. And one more issue is there in this particular program that is we suppose if the user is giving Kabir once again and that particular record is already there in the so well password can be different because password generally can be duplicate, it's not an unique, but the username should be unique. So even if I'm different giving a different uh, password like Kabir Ali, if I'm giving this, it should prompt me that the user is already there. But I don't know what will be happening. And let's see, the dialog was working and it says the record is successful. So this is a bug. It should not get saved, right? Because once a username is already there, it should restrict me from saving the same username because that's where the select query will fail actually. So this bug has to be resolved. So in my next video, I will be talking about alert dialog box and in that also, I will be talking about how to resolve this problem. Until my next video, I have already performed the insert operation. So if you go through it minutely, I'm glad to say that definitely you will be able to insert record in the table. So let's wait for my next video. Until then, have a nice time.